In this module, you will learn about the second law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics deals with the conservation of energy. It is also known as the law of conservation of energy. According to this law, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. The other form of the first law allows us to convert heat completely into energy. Therefore, according to the first law, it would be possible for a car engine to take heat from its surroundings and run the vehicle without burning any fuel. However, it seems that nature has put a constraint on such processes. There are many such processes that are valid according to the first law of thermodynamics but which does not take place on their own. For example, when you rub the palms of your hands together, they turn warm. However, the palms do not absorb heat from the surroundings and rub each other on their own. Let's now look at another example. Consider a metallic box with two chambers separated by a partition. One of the chambers is filled with a gas while the other is empty. Now, if the partition is removed, the gas will diffuse to the other chamber. However, will the diffused gas molecules move back on their own and occupy the first chamber again? This will probably never happen. It means that some processes that ought to take place as per the first law of thermodynamics do not actually take place because nature does not allow them to take place. Hence, there must be a law in nature that decides whether a process allowed by the first law of thermodynamics actually takes place or not. The second law of thermodynamics is the principle of nature that prevents certain processes from taking place even though they are consistent with the first law of thermodynamics. Since all processes in nature occur spontaneously, that is, irreversibly, it follows that the entropy of the universe is increasing continuously. This important statement, that is, in any spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe always increases, is known as the second law of thermodynamics. We can express the second law of thermodynamics as an equation. According to the equation, a change in the entropy of the universe is equal to a change in the entropy of the system plus a change in the entropy of the surroundings. It means that if a change in the entropy of the universe is greater than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous. If a change in the entropy of the universe is less than zero, then the reaction is non-spontaneous. And if a change in the entropy of the universe is equal to zero, then the reaction is at equilibrium. Chemists, however, are usually more interested in the reaction mixture or the system rather than the surroundings. Hence, we can state the second law of thermodynamics in terms of the thermodynamic properties of the system without taking into consideration the surroundings. And this can be done by taking into account the Gibbs free energy, G, which for any particular system is defined as G is equal to H minus T into S, where H is enthalpy, T is absolute temperature and S is entropy. In terms of the Gibbs free energy, the second law of thermodynamics can be restated as 
in any spontaneous process at constant temperature and pressure, the free energy of the system always decreases. According to this definition, if the free energy of the system is less than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous. Similarly, if the free energy of the system is greater than zero, then the reaction is non-spontaneous. And if the free energy of the system is equal to zero, then the reaction is at equilibrium. You have now reached the end of this module. In this module, you learned that the first law of thermodynamics could not explain the feasibility of a process. For an irreversible process, the entropy of the system and surroundings taken together, that is, of the universe, increases, while for a process at equilibrium it remains constant. One form of the second law of thermodynamics is, in any spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe always increases. If a change in the entropy of the universe is greater than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous. Another statement of the second law is, in any spontaneous process, at constant temperature and pressure, the free energy of the system always decreases. If a change in the JIP's free energy is less than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous.